let's stand to our feet and worship together. give the Lord praise in this place today. Yeah, well, welcome to church. And while you're at it, why don't you applaud yourself for getting out of a warm bed and coming and braving the cold. This is me applauding you. Thanks for joining us. If you're in the room or watching online, we have been celebrating all day long and we wanted to show you some people that got baptized this morning. We've had four people be baptized this morning. Cameron Caldwell, Isaiah Taylor, Titus McFarland, and his brother Isaiah. I wrote it down wrong. His brother, McFarland. 
And so if you want to be baptized, you haven't done that yet, be sure to sign up, baptism.woodlake.church. We believe that baptism is simply an outward expression of an inward decision that you have made to follow Christ. If you haven't done that, be sure and sign up for the second Sunday in February where we will be baptizing once again. Can we give it up for all those that were baptized this morning? Guys, we're celebrating with you this morning. Once again, thanks for joining us in church today as we continue on in worship. I just wanted to invite our prayer partners to the front. They're going to start spreading out all around this room during worship. And if at any time you have a prayer need, be sure and find one of them. They'll be all around the room with green badges on. And so if you have a prayer need, come find them and let's pray together and let's continue to worship.
to you are all things you deserve the glory come on sing it one more time god you're worthy you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to This week we'll celebrate the life and legacy of a man who stood up for peace and for justice. I wanted to share a quote from him. It says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Will you join me today as we close worship out? Can we just pray that God's love would drive out hate? Not only in the relationships that we have with those around us, but in our world, y'all love needs to drive out some hate in our world. Will you pray with me today that love drives out hate and for peace to happen, for peace to happen at home, for peace to happen abroad, all over our world. For the nation of Israel, we pray for peace today. Will you join me as we pray? Lord, today we are so thankful for people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who stood up for peace and justice. And Lord, today the cry of our heart is that your love would drive out darkness your love would drive out hate, that your light would drive out darkness. Lord, today, for every relationship that we are in, God, help us. Lord, help your love to work through us to drive out that hate. And may your light drive out the darkness. Lord, not only in our relationships, but Lord, in our country, in our world. God, today we lift the nation of Israel up and we pray for their peace today. Lord, thank you that your love knows no bounds that your love does not stop, that your love continues on. When our love stops, your love continues on. And Lord, today we are grateful for your love. And Lord, we're grateful for your light, that because of your light, there can be no darkness. And so Lord, I pray today over the situations in our lives that they seem dark. Lord, today I pray for my friends, for the things that they're walking through, that they just seem dark. Lord, may your light come and light up that situation and may it drive out the darkness for every thought in our mind, for every thought of anxiety, for every thought of fear. May your love, may your light drive those out in the name of Jesus. Lord, today we give those to you. We surrender to you. And Lord, we pray for your peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. You can be seated this morning. Good morning, church family. We are so glad that you've joined us today on this frosty and now snowy Sunday morning. Everyone who's in the building today, just to let you know, when you enter into the gates in heaven, you will be receiving a frosty badge because you made it today. Um, there's bonus points for, I'm totally kidding, there's no points. But we are so glad that you've joined us this morning. If you were unable to come and you're watching online, we're so glad that you've joined us from wherever you may be watching from. Thank you for jumping in. In fact, drop us a line, say hey to us, share that feed with anybody that may be around or watching with you. We're so glad you're joining us. Hey, if you're with us in person or online, we hope that you would experience God and find family. And family is not just something we talk about, it's something we believe in. We want everybody to find family that they can depend on and help them through whatever may come along throughout your day. There's a benefit to being plugged into the family of God. We want to make sure that you are getting all that you can out of the kingdom. So we have a one-time class called the Woodlake Way. It's one time, once a month, on the second Sunday of every month. In fact, it's taking place right this second in our gathering space. One class where you get to hear all about who we are and how you and your family have a space here in our church. We believe in getting you connected. The Woodlake Way is the way to do it. That's why we call it that. It is the way you find your family. So if you want to sign up at any time, just simply go to theway.woodlake.church. We'd love to have you with us. 
As I said earlier, we have been celebrating all day long. We actually take the second Sunday of every month and set it aside just to spend some time praising God and celebrating all that he's done and all he's let us be a part of. And right now, we're going to look back not only at December, but y'all, we're looking at all of 2023 and all the amazing things that we were a part of and that God did. So take a second and check out this video. Hey, Woodlake family, I'm Pastor Brandon, and it is second Sunday, and that means it's time to celebrate, but it is not just the second Sunday of the month. It is the second Sunday of the year. So we're gonna take a look back at all of the incredible things that God did through our church family in 2023. Through Bridge Builders, we build bridges to people that don't know Jesus yet, locally and all over the world through incredible organizations. This year, you guys supported Bridge Builders in a massive way. Back in March, we had our annual celebration and auction where we brought in over $180,000, and that was just the beginning. Through the end of the year, we gave an incredible Christmas miracle offering, and when you put all of that together with all of your monthly gifts, right now, our 2023 number is sitting at over $905,000. Here are just a few of the ways that your giving impacted our community this year through Bridge Builders. We've played off the lunch debt at Cedar Ridge Elementary and Jefferson Elementary. Woodlake Family Church Glenpool gave $20,000 to Teen Challenge, $2,000 to Malden Ministries, $10,000 to Brush Creek Teen Challenge. And they provided the uniforms for Brush Creek Teen Challenge, which ultimately won their state championship. Championship. Woodlake family, amazing job. The money is still coming in. We're still counting it all up, and we know that God wants to do even more in 2024. Through Bridge Builders, we pray, we give, and we go. And this year, we went on some incredible trips. One of those was a trip to Rwanda with Advocates for Africa, where we had a sports camp. We went door to door, impacting the homes around the Advocates Christian Academy and the area. We also went on a missions trip to Ireland where we held a kids camp and VBS right there in the middle of the city. Woodlake Family Church Turley had a big goal this year. Their goal was to give $7,500 to Fire Bible. Now, if you don't know what Fire Bible is, their mission is to get God's word into the hands of people all over the world, even translating it into languages that don't have the Bible in their language yet. And so pastors JJ and Jennifer gave that vision to our church family in Turley, and it was a massive goal. It was a huge vision to get $7,500 raised by Woodlake Family Church Turley by the end of the year. Well, God did it. God enabled them to give, not by the end of the year, but by August. And he did not enable them to give $7,500. They gave over $10,000 to get God's word into the hands of people all over the world. Amazing job with Lake Family Church Turley. One of the ways that we impact our community is through Care Portal. This is a way that our church family can meet the very real needs of foster families throughout our area. This year, you guys gave big to Care Portal, and you were able to impact 171 foster children and their families. And with everything that you gave, you made a combined financial impact of $83,000. Woodlake family, awesome job. If you would like to give through Care Portal and meet some of these needs, some of them are big, sure, but there's also small, tangible needs that all of us can be a part of, just scan this QR code and sign up now to find out the needs in our community. Not only did you guys give through Care Portal, you gave through your time. This year, we had two massive events for foster families. We had a back to school event here at the church and we had our annual foster family Christmas party. Between both, we had a lot of volunteers and you guys did an incredible job showing these families the love of Jesus. Camp this year was massive. We took over 200 students to youth camp, 60 students to kids camp, and between both, we saw over 20 students get saved, get baptized in the Holy Spirit, rededicate their lives to Jesus, and get called into ministry. Woodlake family, thank you for supporting the next generation. Everybody give it up for pastors JJ and Jennifer at Woodlake Family Church, Turley. I already told you that this was a big attendance year for us. Well, that is true at our Turley location as well. They continued to grow through this year. We broke ground on our brand new building. And now as this video is being filmed, we are nearing completion on our debt 
free new building at our Turley location. Family, amazing job. We cannot wait to see what God does at Woodlake Family Church Turley in the years to come. Everybody give it up for Woodlake Sisterhood. These guys had an incredible year. They had sisterhood camp, which was a lot of fun and some great community building. And they had record attendance at Bible studies this year, 322 ladies in God's word, learning and growing together. Our goal this year for our Christmas miracle offering is $66,000. Now that was a big goal. Honestly, it was by far the biggest offering goal we had ever set for a Christmas offering. But we knew that God had a vision bigger than us and we knew that through Advocates for Africa, and specifically Advocates Christian Academy, this giving would provide both a bus and a classroom for students that were graduating from elementary school and needing a new middle school space. Well, we gave you that vision. We asked you to pray, we asked you to give, and as the year wound down, you gave above and beyond the massive vision that God gave us. You not only gave $66,000, you guys gave $85,912. Amazing job, Woodlake family. Going into this year, we decided that we were not going to baptize people quarterly anymore. We wanted to have baptism every single month. And in doing that, we knew that we would probably see more baptisms than we've seen before. But guys, I'll be honest with you. As we were filming this, I had to ask Mike, like, is that the real number? The number of people baptized just this year, 125 people got baptized in 2023, making their faith public to their friends, their family, and their church family. Our number one goal this year, as it is every year, was that people would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. These events were amazing, the giving was amazing, but we know that the reason we exist is to introduce people to Jesus. And this year, 243 people said yes to Jesus. <laughs> Normally the video is done at this point, but this time we're not done because we're not just celebrating a number for the year. We are celebrating the vision that God gave our team, specifically Pastor Jamie back in 2020. As 2020 was getting started, God gave our pastor a vision. And that was that a thousand people would come to know Jesus by 2025. Now, for those of you keeping track, we're not at 2025 yet, but God has blessed this church so much that that vision of a thousand people came true, not in 2025, but back in 2023. And as of today, since 2020 started, 1,043 people made the life-changing decision to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. Everybody get up on your feet and let's celebrate. Well, let's celebrate this morning. Y'all, 1,000 people since 2020 said yes to Jesus. They're saved on their way to heaven and growing in the family of God. Thank you so much for praying and believing for salvation and life change. It happens, y'all, and it's the whole reason that we turn the lights on here. We say it all the time, but take a second and think about that. A thousand people, they said yes to Jesus and turned their lives around, stepped out of darkness, stepped into light, and decided, I'm gonna follow Jesus and they're on their way to heaven. Would like, give yourselves a round of applause, give the Lord a round of applause, and you can be seated today. In that video, you saw our Turley location and everything going on there. If you're new to Woodlake, we've been talking for quite a while now that we are expanding that facility there because we are running out of room. We've ran out of restroom space, we've run out of meeting space, and it was just time to expand. You'll see some updated pictures of some things. Those were taken just last Thursday, Friday, um, of the updates there at the facility. As you can see, we are nearing completion on that building, and actually just this week, we've decided to open uh, the current facility there to the community so that they can come in and warm themselves. They can come by and get a free cup of warm coffee or cocoa. And as they're there, we'll, we'll have on the Chosen series there in the auditorium. And we're just praying that as people come in to warm their hearts, that their spirits are warmed as well, and that the Lord just, maybe he's using just a smile upon somebody's face as they hand them a warm cup of coffee. We're praying that the Lord moves upon Turley. And so as you give today, everything that you give will go right into Turley, everything right above your tithe. Hey, we want to make it easy for you to give. 
Uh, if you have a physical offering, you can drop those in the offering buckets as they pass by in just a moment. If you're watching online or, or you'd like to give throughout the week, you can go to our website, woodlake.church. There's an option to give there. Or you can give right now from your cell phone by texting any dollar amount and the word Woodlake to the number on the screen behind me, 73256. But we want to say thank you. Thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to sow into. We believe in being obedient first and bringing our tithe, but all those gifts coming in above the tithe today are going to see another campus, another location right here in our city, bringing people to Christ, even this week. People who are simply cold, we're giving them an opportunity to come in. That's what we are giving to, giving to today. If you have a physical offering, I want to ask you to hold it out in front of you. I want to pray for it before we move on. Jesus, we are so grateful for every opportunity that we have to sow into what you are doing around the world. There are lives being changed that we may never meet this side of eternity, but because of each and every one of our gifts, no matter the size, they go much further in your hands than they ever could in ours. They are meeting needs that we don't even know exist. And God, we want to simply say thank you. Thank you for all the amazing things you've given us opportunities to do this past year. But God, we look forward with expectation to what you are getting ready to do in 2024 and even beyond. So God, we give excited. We give generously into what you're doing around the world. Take each and every gift and bless it and bless every person who's giving today. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said, amen. amen. We're getting ready to jump into a brand new sermon series, but before we do, stand up to your feet, find about three or four people, and tell them your best tip on how to stay warm in five-degree weather today. Hey, good morning. Good cold morning. So glad that you are here in the third service. You guys just get a star by your name. I'm just going to say, and jewels in your crown. I don't know about that last part, but we'll see, okay? <laughs> hey, glad you're with us today. If you're new with us here today, my name is Jamie Austin, and uh, my wife Jen and I, we, we pastor this amazing church family. I just came out of our Woodlake Way class, which is our membership class, and got a lot of people in there today joining the Woodlake family. So if you're new with us here today, man, my prayer is when you leave here today, you just feel like there's something different about us, and uh, we're, just, we're just pumped to have you. So Woodlakers, give all of our guests a huge round of applause, and everybody watching online, thank you so much. Okay, I want you to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 3. Uh, man, I, uh, you notice our, our uh, percussion group that was up here before. Today, we begin a, just a mini-series that we've entitled Rhythms, where we're talking about healthy spiritual rhythms. Have you ever kind of got on a rhythm in your life? Uh, maybe a sleep rhythm uh, that happened to me about 20 years ago when Wyatt was born. Uh, we got out of a, oh, there he is. Hey, Wyatt. Um, we, we didn't sleep. He was what they call colicky. Anybody know what a colicky baby was? So yeah, we questioned everything from, for quite a while. But anyway, uh, but if you ever get out of rhythm, uh, it can kind of hard to get back in a rhythm, and boy, it affects everything. And that, that's the same way spiritually. There are some things that, that are crucial to our health spiritually that need to be in the rhythm. So the next couple of weeks, we're just going to break down a few things and, and their importance. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of a healthy rhythm of believers being in the Bible. 
Now, before we say, well, duh, of course, Christians need to be in the Bible. How many of you, like your pastor, you start out real good in a good rhythm, and then you get busy, and stuff comes up, and, and then all of a sudden now we're out of a rhythm, and I'm not feeling God or hearing God, and I'm not what I need to be in the Lord, and, and, and the truth is, uh, the Bible is crucial in the life of a believer. Listen to this stat, okay? This is a recent stat, a Gallup poll, that only 58% of professing believers believe the Bible is the inspired word of God. That's terrifying. Only 58%. In fact, Eric, I'll tell you, I believe that that is probably one of the main problems with the modern church. We don't believe the Bible. We don't believe the Bible. Check this out. 25%. Only 25% say it should be interpreted literally. And 16% of professing believers believe the Bible is just an ancient book of fables, of stories. And, 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 and I'll be honest with you, the devaluing of the word of God and an incorrect view of the Bible can cause us to get out of rhythm and become spiritually unhealthy. Let me show you something cool. Check out this chart right here behind me, Okay. This shows cross-references in the Bible where they connect from the Old Testament to the New Testament. This shows 63,779 verses that can be cross-referenced, meaning they reference one another. Now, if one author did that at one time, that would be an unbelievable feat. But check it out. This was done by over 40 offers over a span of 1,500 years on three continents. That's a miracle. Absolute miracle. Check this out. Speaking of Old Testament, talking about the Messiah and then the New Testament, Jesus being the Messiah. Check this out. There are at least 332 distinct Old Testament predictions regarding the Messiah which Jesus fulfilled perfectly. Now, check this out. One professor, Peter Stoner, he's calculated the probability of any one man fulfilling only eight of these prophecies. The chance is one in 10 to the 17th power. Somebody described it this way. That's like covering the state of Texas with silver dollars two feet deep and then drop them out of a helicopter and with one grab. How impossible do you think that is? Now check this out. Let's do some math here. We had some math teachers in the first or the second service who were just minds were blown. I am not a math person, so it just sounds cool. Okay. The same professor said this, that if you consider 48 of these prophecies, the odds are 1 in 10 to the 157th power. And Jesus fulfilled them all. Can I have an amen? Okay. Josh McDowell, in his book, The New Evidence That Demands a Verdict, this is an incredible read, he assembled a volume that did nothing but prove the Bible. Okay. He says, the Bible has more manuscript evidence to support it than any 10 pieces of classical literature combined. Okay? John Warwick Montgomery said this, no book and its documents of the ancient period are as well attested bibliographically as the New Testament. Bernard Rahm, the Baptist theologian and apologist, speaking of the accuracy of the biblical manuscripts, said this, that Jews preserved it as no other manuscript has ever been preserved. They had a special class of men, they were called scribes, whose sole duty was to preserve and transmit these documents. Listen to how accurate they would do it. They even kept count of the letters and syllables and words to ensure its accuracy. That melts your mind, doesn't it? What am I trying to tell you? This is this. You can trust the Bible. You can trust the Bible. Woodlake family, and if you're guests with us here today, you're part of the family. The challenge of this message when we talk about rhythms spiritually, I want to challenge the Woodlake family that in 2024, we will 
develop and maintain and grow in a healthy rhythm, rhythm of Scripture. So I, I want you, I'm going to put another slide behind me. These are apps. We live in a day and age where it's become so easy to study the Word of God. You have the Version Bible app. The Blue Letter Bible app is not only uh, the Bible, but also with commentaries and, and sources and notes. Also, the Bible Project, the YouTube channel, great place to go and study the Word of God. You can make note of that or take a picture of, of the screen right there. But what we wanted to do is to provide you with, with an opportunity to study Scripture. The, the excuse that it's hard is forever gone away. Can I have an amen? I'm so thankful for that. Here's what I do want to challenge you with this. Some of you are, you might get overwhelmed and you say, you know what, I, I don't have time to study the scripture. Some of you are like, hey, I'm ADD, I'm ADHD, I can't sit down for very long. Your pastor is ADD. I was ADD back when it was just called bad behavior, okay? <laughs> so, so what I'm trying to say is, even if it's just maybe downloading the YouVersion app and getting the scripture of the day, start there. Start there. It'll go a long way, I promise you. Again, a healthy rhythm of the Bible. I love what someone said recently. They said this, you can't say God doesn't speak when your Bible is closed. He will speak through his word. I'm going to show you here in just a moment. Here at Woodlake, we have lots of opportunities to grow. We have our sisterhood Bible studies. I mean, our, our ladies, hundreds of them went through uh, Bible studies together all throughout the year. Our brotherhood, our men's Bible studies are literally all throughout the week, morning, noon, and night. They are all over the place. What we have done is we've made it so easy for you to get in community and study the Word of God together. I believe when community, the church family, studies the Word of God together, it magnifies its effect on us, right? Right? Not only that, but Wednesday nights is a great growth opportunity. Pastor Brandon, who leads our prayer service, we have men's and women's Bible studies, youth service, kid stuff going on. Well, we are growing in the Word of God on Wednesday nights. Some of you just need to start coming on Wednesday nights. Folks, we got free dinner. I expected more people to get excited about that. If nothing else, you got to eat, right? So, so come and eat, and man, slip into one of our groups, and let's grow together. Cool? Let me say it this way. Uh, anybody know where Fairland, Oklahoma is at? Raise your hand real high, both of us. Okay, there's three of us, four of us, okay. Fairland, Oklahoma, the Fairland Owls, okay? Thriving metropolis. Five miles south of Fairland, Oklahoma is the Austin Ranch. If you were to drive up there any given day, announced or unannounced, you could walk in the front door, and my mom's initial reaction will be this. What can I get you to eat? <laughs> if you've ever been there, and some of you have, my mom is automatically trying to fatten us up immediately. She can, I got leftovers. If you'll just give me a second. I mean, she's going to cook this spread. And, you, you know, if you're like me, I'm like, Mom, hey, don't worry about it. I don't need to eat. She's going to keep, you know, she, that wasn't a question. When she said, what can I get you? That wasn't a question. You're eating, okay? That's, that's kind of the deal. But if, if you keep refusing my mom over and over and over again, number one, you will offend her. But <laughs> so just eat, all right? <laughs> I'm just telling you. It's just easier to eat, okay? Um, but she'll eventually say this if you keep refusing. She'll say this, well, it's not my fault if you starve. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Here's what I'm getting at here at Woodlake. Family, I want you to listen to me. It's not our fault if you starve. Okay? I'm not being fed. You can't say you're not being fed when you don't come to dinner. Y'all with me? If you come to me and say, I'm leaving the church, there's a lot of reasons to leave a church. But if you come here and say it's because I'm not being fed, here's my loving response. <laughs> okay? Okay? Come and grow. <laughs> Some of your guests here today, you're like, okay, all right, I'll be nice. Listen, listen here, Woodlakers, 2024, I want to challenge you. Let's grow in the Word of God together, okay? And I'm going to show you how important that is. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse 16. The Apostle Paul, let me give you context. He's trying to encourage uh, his son in the faith 
Timothy. Timothy would be leading a ministry, pastoring people. There's a lot of difficulty that comes with that. But one of the main things that Timothy was going to fight was false teachers. False teachers who would try to pull people away, who will try to get them to follow themselves, who would refute the gospel, refute the Bible, or they would say things that sounded kind of right. But they really weren't. And, and so, so, so we live in that world today. Would you agree? And Paul says this to Timothy, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. Boy, we could stop right there. Don't stop in the Bible. Don't stop uh, the, into the word of God. He says, because you know from whom you've learned it. Then he goes on to say this, and how from your infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. He said, you've been taught the Bible since you were born. Taught the Bible since you were born. Do you realize that on Sunday morning in our nursery, our nursery workers are not there babysitting. Our children's ministers, our children's team, Sunday and Wednesday, they're not there babysitting. They're there ministering the word of God to the next generation. Some of you are called by God to get off your dairy air and get involved. Boy, I told you I was going to be nice, and I want. Listen to me. Some of you are going to be called by Yahweh to arise and go forth into the next. Am I saying it nicer there? Okay. If you ever wonder why we place so much emphasis on the next generation here at Woodlake, all these kids are all our kids. And if we fail to reach them, we fail. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Pray for those kids. But they're, but they're in there. I've been back there. They're changing diapers and they're praying over those kids. They're declaring scripture. Oh, God, right now I ask that this child would have a powerful encounter with you at a young age. Lord, no weapon formed against them will prosper. You knew them before they were formed in the room. I'm about to preach right now. But these are being prayed over our kids. Can I have an amen? Amen. So parents, grandparents, I want to encourage you. Get your kids in church. Get your kids in church. Um, I'm, I'm going to melt your mind here, okay? Some of you, your kids give you reasons why they can't come to church. Oh, it's boring. I don't know anybody. Oh, things. Here's, this is going to just melt your mind. That's why you're the parent. <laughs> Scripture says, train a child up, raise them up, and when they are old, they will not depart from it when they're old. Now, some of you may say, yeah, I'm waiting to see that scripture fulfilled in my kids and my grandkids because they are off the rails right now. They're, you ever lived off the rails before? I have, but I was raised in church. I was raised in Sunday school. I, was, I knew the word. And it's amazing how I got older, all of a sudden, the word began to make more sense to me. It was alive. In the Hebrew, that phrase, train a child up or raise them up, it literally means this, help them develop a taste for the word. So, so uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What I'm trying to say is this world is shoveling stuff down our throats. Would you agree? And at some point in time, if I have been, if, if somebody has helped me develop a taste for the word, I recognize what the world is trying to get me to feast on is a waste. It is hollow, and I am malnourished if I just feast on what the world gives me. But the word of God, hallelujah, if I've, if I've had a taste developed for it. So parents, I just, I encourage you, your, par your kids might go kicking and screaming. That's okay. Get them here anyway. Okay, well, Jamie, my teenagers got a job on Wednesday nights. They need to quit that job. Oh, a pastor's meddling. I don't care. You got, listen to me, parents. I don't, I don't know why I'm saying this, but some of you watching online, you have a little window with your kids. Don't waste it. Back to our regularly scheduled message. Okay. Verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So Timothy, we can, we can derive from scripture that he was feeling insecure, that he was feeling scared, he was feeling inadequate. Anybody ever felt that way before? Listen to how the New Living Translation describes verse 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives, 
It corrects us when we are young and teaches us to do what is right. Listen to verse 17. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So what the apostle Paul does here is he, is he, is he asserts two very real things. One, where the Bible comes from and what it's intended for. So if you're taking notes, there's only two things that I'm going to give you here today. Number one. All scripture is God breathed. The Greek, that word is inspired. That God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, moved upon men to, to, to write. What I love about this is that God didn't override their personality, he didn't override their context, he didn't override their, their way of speaking. God used it to produce. The Bible, both the Old and the New Testament. A.H. Uh, Strong, he described what being inspired or God-breathed meant. He said this, it's special divine influence on the minds of the writers of the Bible in virtue of which their production, apart from errors and transcriptions, and then rightly interpreted together, constitute an infallible rule of faith and practice. That's a big, big statement, isn't it? an infallible rule of faith and practice. Woodlake family, if you haven't already, we need to settle the issue, okay, that the Bible is from God. It's God-breathed. It's God-inspired. This is not a book of fables. This is not merely a book that, that's okay and makes us feel good at night. It is the word of the living God. Paul writes in Thessalonians, he's celebrating them for, for, for believing in the word. He said, when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. It is the word of God. I love what one pastor said. He said it this way. The Bible is a supernatural book with a supernatural author. Isn't that wonderful? Here's the second thing. This is the last thing, but we're going to camp here for just a little bit, okay? Not only is all scripture God breathed, all scripture is useful. It's useful. It's inspired of God. It teaches what is true, make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. That word equipped in the Greek means to cause to be fully qualified. Now, uh, let me say it this way. I'm so thankful that I can listen to a podcast and listen to sermons all day long. Folks, you listen to them. I listen to them. I have about four or five, uh, at least four uh, pastors that I listen to every week because they speak into me. Okay? And that's good. Some of you are here today and you got a Bible study or a book on this or a book on that. Those are good. I'm so thankful for God-inspired people who use their gifts to produce studies and that sort of thing. But ultimately, what Paul is saying through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, when you have the Bible, you have it all. Does that make sense? So when you are studying the word of God or when you're going through something, make sure the Bible is your primary source. And if it's your only source, you're okay. You got it all right there. Does that make sense? Okay. His word, Paul was saying to Timothy, he said, you're going to encounter some, some teachers that are going to twist the word of God. They're going to try to twist the gospel. They're going to try to uh, make it profitable for themselves. He said, Timothy, if you just stick with the word. In fact, let me say it this way. He goes on to charge Timothy. Some of you have heard this passage of scripture where he says, Timothy, I charge you, preach the word. Don't preach political punchlines. Don't Preach popular opinion. Preach the word. Uh, you're, you're not getting me. Let me say it this way. We're coming into an election year, right? Don't preach Fox News. Oh, let me get the other side. Don't preach CNN. Don't preach what somebody posted on social media. Preach the word. Are you tracking with me? 
I'm going to let you know right here off the bat coming into this next year. If it's an election year, don't send me that email. Don't send me that video you found on, on, on the dark web. I'm not going to watch it, and I'm not going to read it. I'm just letting you know right off. I, I, some of you are like, what? Well, how are people going to know how to vote? Uh, the Bible? Read the Bible. You'll know how to vote. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You'll know how to vote, right? I've just officially offended everybody. One of them days. <laughs> Okay, it says the scripture is profitable for doctrine. What is doctrine? It, it, it says it's profitable for what is right, for reproof. There's a King James term. What does that mean? To teach us what is not right, for correction, <laughs> how to get right, and for instructions in righteousness, how to stay right. Yeah. One commentator said it this way, a Christian who studies the Bible and applies what he or she learns will grow in holiness and avoid many pitfalls in this world. Paul went on to tell Timothy, he said this, for the time will come when men will not put up or people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Okay, let's talk about this for just a moment. I find it so interesting that the Bible just gets more and more relevant as the days go by. Would you agree? People are not going to put up with sound doctrine. You know what he's saying? People are going to stop putting up with what makes sense, what's morally right. They're not going to put up with it anymore. In fact, Scripture says there's coming a day where people will call evil good. We're there. Would you agree? Yeah. Ooh, Scripture's got it right. Instead, they're going to surround themselves with teachers who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. I'm probably giving you a little more information than you need, but, but what I love is when my wife scratches my back. There's a spot that I, that's right above my thumb that I cannot reach. Well, and Jen will scratch it. I always pretend like I'm doing the little, that's way too much, isn't it? <laughs> I see Wyatt back there just going, tell mom about that one. Um, but you know what? In our flesh, there are some things that just, oh, it feels good because it's, it's meeting the need of my flesh. And Paul said there's coming a day where people, I mean, they're going to have an itch. Their flesh wants to be accommodated, and they're going to have no problem surrounding themselves with teachers who will affirm what their flesh wants. That's why I use the word instead. We are there. That's why people will go, well, so-and-so uh, says I can do this. Uh, who cares what so-and-so says? What does the word say? Right? <laughs> I remember as a kid growing up, I'd be arguing with my parents about like, like rules in the house. I know you never did that, right? And I can remember saying, yeah, but my friend at their house, they could do this and they could do that. And I remember my mom, I was more afraid of my mom than my dad. You know what I'm talking about? Like some people are like, you just wait till your father gets home. I pray for dad to come home to save <laughs> Me, my mom believed in the laying on of hands. Hallelujah, right? <laughs> but listen, she would grit her teeth. And she would say, you know what? You're not their kid. You're my kid. Okay? Here's what I'm trying to say. Who do you belong to? Then it doesn't matter what they say. What does he say? Does that make sense? And there are going to be some things that he says in his word that go against my flesh. They offend my flesh. Scripture says this about Jesus describing him, that one of his functions is that he is the rock of offense. Yes, purple sash wearing, lamb pet, and Jesus is going to hurt your feelings from time to time. <laughs> Boy, what was in my coffee here? Listen. Let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. 
in 2024 here at Wood Lake, you're going to hear some things that are good for you, but they're not going to feel good. If you were here in the fall, we did a lengthy series on the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, the apostle Paul came out swinging on sexual purity and, and what it meant on identity. I mean, again, the Bible is relevant. Can I have an amen? I got many emails from people that said, thank you for not dodging what the Bible says. Even if it doesn't feel good, it is for my good. Are you with me? You're going to hear some things that offend you from the platform. Listen, I, we will we'll do our best not to be in our, in our nature offensive, but the word is going to offend from time to time. And if it offends you, it needs to because it's God wanting to set you free. Amen. Itching ears. See, see one, one commentator said this, when people leave the word of God, they often then embrace fantastic fantasies. When a man or woman rejects the word of truth, God's truth, it isn't that they believe in nothing, they will believe in anything. Here's the action step. In 2024, let's make an effort to intentionally, everybody say intentionally, intentionally. to grow in the word of God. Okay. Uh, I'm bringing it in for a landing here. Listen to me. Um, if you come to my house to eat, Jen's a great cook, okay? If you're sitting around the table and you're wondering where I'm at, but you notice there's a high chair there, there is a problem. And all of a sudden, you see me come in in a onesie and a bib. <laughs> That's an awful picture, isn't it? I told you I wasn't going to offend you, but there it go. And, and a bib. Have you seen the bibs that have like the tray to catch all the food? That's brilliant. I wish they had that when my kids were little, okay? Um, and then all of a sudden, maybe there's a sippy cup sitting by the table, and I come and hop up in it. You're going to think there's a problem, right? I got to show you something real quick. Eric, hand this to me. Um, you see the sippy cup? Do you see what it says on it? Okay, so here's the deal. I love to drink coffee. I love coffee. I hate lids. I love to, because there's not enough comes out of that little slit in the coffee, the lid, right? So I like the whole thing. Jen, every Sunday is like, get a lid. I'm like, I'm a man. I'm over 40. Um, <laughs> until one Sunday, worship was cranking. It was, don't you love our worship team, by the way? Man, worship was cranking. God was moving, and somehow... The coffee was poured out before the Lord, right on the floor, right in front of me, okay? And Jen doesn't have to say a word. She just does this. I can hear her, eye, her eyes just blink. I know I'm in trouble. Bill and Jackie Dallas, who are on the front row, are prayer partners. And give all of our prayer partners a huge round of applause. Man, they're amazing. Listen to me. Let me stop for just a moment. Woodlake family, take advantage of our prayer partners. What I mean by that, if you have a need on your heart, this is a church that believes in prayer, amen? This is a church that believes the word of God. And our prayer partners, they want nothing more than to pray God's word over any need. Why? Because when we pray God's word, the word works. Okay, okay. So Bill rushed out, got paper towels, and helped clean it up. He's awesome. I came back the next Sunday, Eric, and this was sitting right there in the deal. So I probably need to use, here you go. Uh, I probably need to use the sippy cup. But if you come to my house and you see that sippy cup and you see the, all the, you're going to think there's a problem, right? <laughs> Pastor needs to grow up. Listen. In 2024, I believe the church, to include Woodlake, the church, Big C, we need to grow up in the things of God. The writer of Hebrews was dealing with a group of believers who just kind of had stalled out on their maturity, and, and he was talking about being able to digest the word of God and, and move on from the basic fundamentals. And he said this, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. What, what the writer of Hebrews is saying right there, he said, hey, some of you have said yes to Jesus, but that's it. You got your get out of hell free card. You got your fire insurance, but you stopped right there. Let's don't be that church. 
Okay? He says they're not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. So it's not just about being saved. It's how to live saved. Are you tracking with me? What, what the writer is talking about is there were believers in the early church that had lapsed back into a second childhood as believers. A second childhood. Uh, you can tell when churches as a whole have lapsed into a second childhood. It becomes all about them. What I want. And if I don't get what I want, then I'm out. If I don't get what I want, then I'm going to be a problem before I'm out. Okay? Don't listen to me. I was going to be nice, but listen to me. Don't hold the church hostage because you refuse to grow up. Grow up. The writer of Hebrews says, hey, at some point, some of you all should be helping feed others. Verse 14, the writer of Hebrews says this, but solid food is for the mature. Listen to this. Who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Wasn't that long ago? I'm going to say this, and, and, and please bear with me. We had a, we had a, a person, is a good friend of mine, but we were preaching some stuff out of the Word of God, and it was against how they were living, and they left. And this person came back sometime later, and I said, what brought you back? And he said, I was going to a church, um, but they were preaching things that didn't, it didn't sound right. And he goes on to say, and didn't feel right. The deal is, there had been constant use at some stage in their life, and they could distinguish what was of God and what was not of God. Everybody say constant use. Okay, here's the last thing. You see, it's not just enough to read the word. You have to believe Jesus gave this indictment to some religious leaders in John 5, 39. He says, you study the scriptures diligently because you think in them you have eternal life. And then he explains it. He says, these are the very scriptures that testify about me. Verse 40, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Here's what's interesting. The Bible is the inspired word of God, both the Old and the New Testament. Both the Old and the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about Jesus. John 1 describes it this way, that in the beginning, speaking of Jesus, was the word. And then the word became flesh, speaking of Jesus, and made his dwelling among us. John chapter 6, verse 68, Peter says this of Jesus, you alone have the words to eternal life. I'm going to end it in prayer here, but here's the deal. Woodlake family, as we enter 2024, may we be a church that has made the decision that we're going to grow in the word of God. That's the only thing you will ever hear taught, or declared at this church. Understand this in 2024. The word will rub you the wrong way at times. But it's for our freedom. But may we be a church that we're not just being spoon-fed by pastors and teachers. Imagine Jen, you're sitting at the dinner table and she says, hold on for just a moment. She's cutting up my food for me and going. <laughs> Sometimes as preachers, we feel that way. <laughs> Open up, here it comes. <laughs> too transparent, too transparent. But listen, listen. May we be a church that in 2024, may we grow to the level that we are a church that on the whole, we're learning to feed ourselves. And then we're learning to help feed others. Can we commit to that? 
Maybe you're here today and like the Pharisees that Jesus was addressing, you know the Bible and you would even say, yeah, I believe the Bible. But in reality, you don't really believe in Jesus. Let me get real direct with you here today. Maybe you're here today and you'd say, you know, I believe the Bible. It's a good book. But, but in reality, you don't believe in Jesus. Jesus said this. You, don't, you still don't come to me for, for eternal life. Jesus said this of himself, that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Pastor, I'm a good person. That'll never work. Pastor, I'm a moral person. That'll never work. Pastor, I volunteer. I'm good to my fellow man. That will never work. Jesus is the only way. Well, pastor, I'm spiritual. I, this path leads to God, and that path leads to God. There is but one path. It is Jesus and his cross alone. Pastor, are you saying that I'm not right with God, that I'm going to hell just because I don't put my faith in Jesus? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm mad at you for saying that. No, 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 you're mad at the word. If that's you here today, you'd say, Jamie, okay. I know Jesus, but I've not put my faith in him. I want to give you an opportunity to say yes. If you're here today and you'd say, that's me. I, I do not have a relationship with the Lord. His word says he loves us. And there's nothing we can do about it. He says it this way, that while we were still sinners, he commanded his love towards us that Christ died. Amen. His word says that, that our sins have been completely paid for through the blood of Jesus Christ. It says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, Jesus. Amen. The book of Romans says that he who knew no sin became my sin. Then the word says this, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So here's the question. Do you need to be saved today? And if that's you, I want to invite you according to the word to come to God through the only way his son, Jesus Christ, and be completely forgiven and made new and be a part of the family of God. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes all across this place? If you're watching online, I saw Pastor Dennis is already on there. He's ready to pray with you. You'd say, Pastor, that's me. I need to say yes to Jesus here today. I need to be forgiven of my sin. Maybe for some of us, just need to stop playing the game. Maybe for some of us, you're here today, and you've, been, you've done nothing but try to believe in yourself, and it's left you wanting. You say, I need to put my faith in Jesus here, the Jesus of the Bible. On the count of three, would you just raise your hand? You say, Pastor, that's me. I need to say yes to Jesus. I need to put my faith in the Jesus of the Bible and accept what he did for me by faith. There we go. One, two, three. Three. Would you raise that hand? Say, that's me. I need to say yes to Jesus. If you're watching online, you let Pastor Dennis know right there that you're saying yes to the Lord. Amen. As we always do, I'm going to invite everyone to pray this prayer with me. Here at Woodlake, we simply call it the prayer of faith. If you're new with this, let me be your pastor for just about another 60 seconds. If you're saying yes to the Lord here today, the Jesus of the Bible. I Just let me lead you in this prayer of faith. Everyone say it. Dear Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died for me, for my sin, in my place. Come into my life. Forgive me and make me new. And from this day forward, with your help, I'm all yours. In your name I pray. I want you to listen to me. The word says in Philippians 1, 6, that he who begins a good work in you will be faithful to carry it on to completion until the return of Jesus Christ. Some of you, you've been discouraged. I feel like this is a word of knowledge for somebody. You've been discouraged because you're, you're frustrated with the... <laughs> feels like you've been under construction for a long time. That will never end. He is committed to you. Amen. Would you stand to your feet this morning as we close? I'm going to pray one more time when I say amen. Our, our prayer partners are going to slip out and come. If you said yes to the Lord, we're, we're not going to be here very much longer. We're almost done. 
if you said yes to the Lord, slip out and come tell one of our prayer partners that you said yes to the Lord today because we want to connect with you and help you grow in the things of God. Uh, but here's the deal. And, and two, if, if you have a need of any kind, our prayer partners are here ready to pray the word, the Bible. The Bible says we can be healed, we can have peace, we can have all the things. They're going to pray God's word over any need you have, or we're going to watch the word do what the word does. But when I say amen, Wood Lake family, I'm talking to you. When I say amen, I'm going to ask you as a church family to commit to grow in the word this year. To grow up in the word this year. Maybe that's coming to a Sunday school class or a small group or a Bible. When, I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's just downloading the U version app and getting the scripture of the day. But, but I'm going to ask you, say, Pastor, as a member of the Woodlake family, with God's help, I'm going to commit to grow in the word. And when I say amen, if that's you, I want you to be, would you just move. Come fill the altars. The worship team is going to lead us in one last song. And, but it just as an act of commitment, Lord, with your help, as a member of the Woodlake family, I'm going to grow in the word this year. I'm going to ask you to leave your seat and let's, let's, let's act in faith. Father, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. But Lord, today we are thankful for the Bible, which is the inspired word of God. God breathed both the Old and the New Testament. So Lord, I ask with your help, we're going to grow. Lord, we're going to maybe put down the sippy cup and take off the bib. And maybe for some of us, we're going to learn to feed ourselves this year. But God, as we do, we're going to come to know Jesus more fully and more clearly. Lord, we're going to grow up and mature as believers. Thank you that in the scriptures, we have all we need. We're thankful for it. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, would you move now and let's worship the Lord before we leave this place today. Oh, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory yes you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all
I want to pray over you as we leave today. Lord, I just pray for my friends today. God, we're so thankful that we were able to sit in your presence this morning and experience you. Lord, I pray for just a motivation from your Holy Spirit for us to get into your word. Lord, help us to maybe take that first step or to take that next step, whatever it may be. And Lord, help us. Lord, I I pray for a desire in our heart to know you more and to get into your word more. And Lord, to live our life upon your promises that you give us in your word. Lord, I pray for everything that they're walking through in or out of this week, that your blessings would be upon them. And Lord, may your light outshine the darkness in those. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. If you want to get connected, brotherhood and sisterhood groups are out in the lobby. Be sure and stop by those on your way out. We'll see you Wednesday night, 530 for dinner, 630 for service. Have a great week. Be safe.